What is up guys, Andy Forrest Dean Manor here and today we're talking all about the shoes that I am super excited to be testing in the early part of 2021 and of course the next pair of shoes dropping into the rotation out for review next week and guess what, they're Adidas. So welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking all about the shoes that I would love to be testing in this early part of 2021, all being well if they are released in my size. Now as you guys know, I love my shoe testing, I love my shoe reviews, but over the last two or three months I've been a little bit quiet on the shoe review front. I made a pact to myself tail end of last year that I wanted to use up and put some more mileage in some of the shoes that I had bought last year. I ended up buying 19 or 20 pairs. I just wanted to get some more use out of the ones that I just felt really bad that I'd reviewed, got to 100 miles and put away. And we're well underway with that. We've got some cracking shoes that are well up and over. Some bigger mileage now, 150, 200 miles, 300 miles, and we're getting there. But I thought it was about time that I really started needing to drop some new shoes in for 2021. I want to, I've missed buying running shoes, and there's going to be a whole host of them coming up over the next few months. So today we're going to be talking about those, and then of course, as I said, these new Adidas shoes that I've managed to get in my size that we're going to be testing out next week and dropping into marathon training. If you're excited for today's video guys give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and we'll start with the shoes that I want to test. So this year I want to be a little bit more strategic with the shoes that I test and with the shoes that I review. I really want to make an effort not to just buy shoes because of hype, because of marketing and get sucked in with the marketing, <clears throat> tempo next percent, but I want to buy shoes that are going to work well for me and hopefully work well in whatever training cycle I'm in at the time. Now for me that might mean dialing back the shoes that I buy this year, it might mean that I only buy 14, 15 pairs, it might mean that I buy less, it might mean that I buy more, who knows, but I want to make sure I'm a little bit more strategic with the shoes that I buy. Obviously two massive releases straight away this year that I've missed, the Ultra Boost 21, the uh, Invincible, two daily trainers coming out from very competitive brands coming in at 160 pounds, I've let those pass me by, I wasn't really overly enamoured by the looks of either of them. The Invincible caught my eye, Zoom X in a daily trainer, it sounded great, but then I thought to myself, actually, I've got enough shoes in my rotation right now, it's just going to sit there, it's just going to make the other shoes take longer to get to 100 miles. And this is what I mean, I want to try and be strategic, I want to look at my rotation and see maybe what's coming to the end of its life and what I'm going to be able to slot in a little bit easier. So with that said, let's dive into the shoes that I'm hoping to test. All being well, they're in my size. We'll start with the Nike Next Percent 2, we'll start with some races. The Next Percent 2 is a race that I really, really, really want to try. It's the one shoe from Nike that they've released that I really do rate. I think they are still top dog when it comes to the racing shoe. Obviously I haven't tried the Adidas racing shoes, I can't get them in my size so I can't comment. Also the New Balance Fuel Cell uh, RC Elite, I haven't been able to try. And the Brooks Hyperion, Tem uh, Hyperion Elite, those shoes. There's a lot that I haven't been able to try, but the ones that I have, which include the Endorphin Pro, the Next Percent, uh, the Hoka shoes, I think the Next Percent for me is the best. It edges the Pro just in terms of performance. And so I wanna see what the Next Percent 2 is all about. It does look very minimal updates, but then if it isn't broken, don't fix it. But it is a very tame update from Nike. Hopefully a better upper, better lacing. It looks like a much lighter upper. We'll see if it reduces weight, we'll have to see. But the general shape and look of the shoe does look to be uh, still very familiar, which I'm I'm okay with. If it works, as I said, don't don't try and tinker with it, don't break it but some of these few minor modifications like the upper, we'll see if they make a difference or not. So that is the first racing shoe I wanna try. Obviously, any Endorphin Pro future releases, we should be seeing the version two later this year, hopefully in this first part of the year. Would love to see what that's all about. Again, you guys know how much I love the Endorphin Pro. Getting a version two would be absolutely incredible. And then of course, the Asics racing shoes. Now, if you're on Instagram, you'll have seen the prototypes flying around there. God, goodness knows, who knows? how many racing shoes that we might see from ASICS this year. But there's a fair few different, we've seen the Sarah Hall racing shoe, we've seen this blue racing shoe, which is uh, being used by a lot of elite athletes at the moment. We've seen it on Julian Wander's feet, we've seen it on, I can't remember the chappie that won Boston, the Japanese athlete that won the Boston Marathon a couple of years ago. Um, he's wearing them, 
Yuki something, I can't remember his name, I'm so sorry. Uh, there's loads of other athletes that we're seeing this shoe pop up on and this shoe looks really exciting. That one and the Sarah Hall one looks really exciting. I'm really hoping that we'll see something in April from them, but all of these shoes look absolutely epic. So those are the racing shoes that I'm really looking forward to and if New Balance come out with any and they do any in a size 13, that is also something I'm really keen to try. In terms of more daily training, speed work trainers, the Hoka Mac 4, obviously I've seen some earlier reviews on that, we saw Seth uh, thoughts on that shoe he really really rates that shoe I've seen other reports that it's a great shoe and I'm excited I want to try that one it looks good and again sounds great for speed work good hoka cushioning as always it might not last a duration I do find hoka shoes cushioning does compress much quicker than some of the others but on the whole it sounds like it could be worthwhile getting for me, Asics is another brand I want to explore a little bit more this year. I missed out on the Ride series last year, the Evo Ride, the Glide Ride. Those two shoes that I'm keen to try this year. More so airing on the Evo Ride 2 than the Glide Ride 2. The Evo Ride 2 looks a little bit more what I'm after. The Glide Ride 2 looks to have a little bit too much of an aggressive rocker. I'm not too into shoes that really try and change your foot. I mean, it really does look aggressive and looks quite stiff at the end. I'm not sure that I like the look of that, although it sounds like a good shoe. The Evo Ride looks a little bit less aggressive, uh, hopefully a bit more comfy, lightweight. We'll see how that goes. That's another one I'm really, really keen to try. And of course, the Nova Blast 2, you know it. That one will be coming out later this year. Again, hopefully in the first half of the year, we'll have to see how that goes. Is there any more that I've written down? Of course, the New Balance Rebel 2. That is the other shoe that I am really, really dead keen on trying. The Rebel one was a shoe that again passed me by. When the Rebel and the Propel were released, I took the route of the Propel. I love the Propel, but I ended up missing out on the Rebel. Everyone loved the Rebel, or lots of people love the Rebel. And again, with this, I'm really hoping that the Rebel 2 can be something that I'm really, really excited about. It sounds very different from the Rebel one, a lot softer underfoot. A lot of people already are saying on Instagram, it's their for people that are getting the shoe early, it's their favorite non-plated shoe already of the year. Super soft cushioning. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited. I'm down for anything New Balance Fuel Cell. You know it. It's one of my favorite midsoles out there. So those are the shoes that I'm really hoping to test later this year. So let's move swiftly on to the shoe that we are dropping into our shoe rotation as of next week. Now my priority this week is to get the Vimero up some more miles. So I'm going to be using it on Friday's run, easy run, and I'm going to be at the late 80 mark. I want to get that shoe up to 100 miles because I have a feeling that when I put this shoe, this shoe, into the rotation, it might get bumped down a little bit. And I don't want that to happen, so this is why I've waited until this long to order the shoe. It was released back in January, but my priority was to not get tempted to buy something else and to use the Vimero, because as you guys know, I mean, really enjoying the Vimero. It's a good, comfortable shoe. It's a shoe that with Nike, I've paid the money and I'm satisfied with the product that I've got. It's a good shoe. And I've said it in the review, it's a good shoe, but that's about as far as it goes. It's not magical, there's nothing special about it, but it's a solid shoe. And I have a feeling that I'm gonna enjoy this shoe a little bit more. So I have a feeling that once we get our foot in this shoe, the Vimero might get sidelines for a little bit. So we'll see how we go. But of course, the main reason is because it's Adidas. I'm excited, I can't normally run in Adidas shoes. And it is the Adidas Solar Boost 3. Now the Solar Boost is a shoe that I have known to be around for a long time. I've never heard a bad word said about it. And it transpires, transpires that I can try their boost range. Ultra Boost, Solar Boost. Obviously I've had the Ultra Boost 19 before. It never really dawned on me that I could probably try boost shoes. It's their Adios lineup that I can't get into because they don't do shoes in a UK size 13 and a half. They only go up to 12 and a half and that's it, they stop. And Adidas are quite tight on sizing, so there's no way I could even squeeze in to a 12 and a half, which is a shame, because I'll be honest with you, walking around the house, I don't have that much toe room at the end of this shoe. I mean, it's okay, but there's not a massive amount of room at the end. So Adidas definitely, for me, are a little bit small in terms of sizing. But it's great because there's a range of their shoes that I am now able to try, and it's going to open up a few you know, doors for me to try new shoes, which is great, because I've wanted to get into some Adidas shoes for ages. Now, I know the Tin Man boys absolutely love their solar boost shoes i've seen solar boost shoes around for ages people have raved about them adam fogg another incredible youtuber if you're not subscribed to this channel you really should be he's just broken four in the mile he swears by his solar boost he i think on a really old video he ended up getting a two or three pairs sent to him for delivery or he, he ordered them because he just does all his idiom easy and moderate runs in them and everyone i speak to that's ever run in the solar boost is very very happy so that's what i'm hoping this shoe is going to become my easy and moderate day shoe it feels 
really, really comfortable. The weight has surprised me, I'm not gonna say in a good or a bad way, but overall, walking around the house, it's a very comfortable shoe. And the reason I didn't wanna get the Ultra Boost is because I knew the Ultra Boost was gonna be ridiculously heavy in my size with that massive heel. I knew it was gonna be well into the 420s, 430 grams, probably nearly 15 ounces. And it just, you know, I loved my Ultra Boost 19, but that was just tipping into the 400 grams. And I know that the Ultra Boost 21 has put on weight since then. So this is a more streamlined, slimmed down version with that boost midsole, but with some more uh, sort of modern twists. As you see, we're, we're seeing in a lot of these new Adidas shoes are these, I've just seen Seth Damore's video actually of his Ultra Boost 21. So these used to be called the torsion plates. They're actually called LEPs now, which is the Linear Energy I can't remember what he said the P stands for, but I don't know if it's propulsion or power or something. But basically, it's meant to be a system that allows you to get a little bit more pop from the shoe. So we'll see how that goes. He said it, he didn't really feel a lot of difference. But for me, what it looks like it's doing is shoring up that boost midsole and hopefully allowing us to get the best out of it because it's very soft and springy midsole. But we'll see with a little bit less of the boost in here than what I'm used to with the Ultra Boost, how it ends up performing. So that's a really exciting one for me, dropping into the marathon rotation next week. So make sure you let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the Solar Boost. If you've ever run in the Solar Boost, let me know in the comments below. It'd be great to get a discussion going. Of course, the list I gave you in the beginning, a rather long list, but to the list of shoes that I'm looking to test, are you looking to test? or try out or get your hands on any of those shoes. Let's get that discussion going. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.